The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Today is Tuesday. It is March 29th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining us at the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. It is the morning after the morning after, and I am joined by DJ Exclusive. We will be joined momentarily by Rebecca Azor. Dr. Carl Mack is out today. Um, he was coming in, James, to talk about, quite honestly, I think it's the only thing people are talking about. And uh, it's a little bit unfortunate because so much more happened at the Oscars than uh, Will Smith uh, having the confrontation with Chris Rock. Uh, but good morning to everyone at Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, wherever you're watching our partners at Act TV, where they encourage you to do more than watch. They want you to act. Good morning to everyone. DJ Exclusive, how are you this morning, man? I'm doing good, brother. How about yourself? Doing good, man. Both of us have different backgrounds, man. Are you out on location? <laughs> you had a party this weekend? What's that? <laughs> What's actually, going on your I I'm actually in my living room. The I painted the wall behind me weeks ago because yeah. you know I me. Mean? Once I get bored in the house and I'm yeah. in the house bored, I'm gonna start doing stuff to get my mind wondering. So in the house I decided boys, to take the on the, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to take on a new project and I did like some little artwork on my wall. I'm like, oh, this looks pretty damn good. So I'm like, no, let me broadcast in front of this wall this morning. It looks good. <laughs> I thought you were like in in the island somewhere. Like you would, you went off to another <laughs> country. Um, speaking of James, I want to go through the headlines really quickly yeah. and, um, give, uh, us time before we have to talk about Will Smith, because I mean, it is news mm -hmm. and it's news on so many different levels that right. said the people of Shanghai, uh, is big, are preparing themselves for China's biggest COVID-19 lockdown in two years. Now this is coming on the heels of the BA, I believe it's 1.2 variant. James, the one that is spreading across the United States of America very rapidly. And this is in the backdrop of everything else that has happened here and up to this point. Um, it's strange seeing China go in this direction and the United States go an entirely different direction. Uh, it's like we're, we're dropping the mask mandates. We're dropping the vaccine mandates uh, and we're opening up like everything is normal. Um, China does a couple of things better than us. Let's just be real. We don't have to be you know, patriotic here, overly patriotic. Um, how do you feel about us opening up while China is starting to lock down again? <clears throat> Excuse me, man, being out this weekend, I had to DJ an event um, for a 70th birthday party. And, you know, granted, a lot of though a lot of the uh, people that were there at that party, they had their mask on, but walking in the hotel and the ballroom, man, no mask at all. When I tell you, it's just like the United States is wide open, man. And I'm, it's, I'm fearful. Like, yeah. bro, honestly, I already feel me being out, even though I had my mask on as well, too. I'm just like, man, I want to go get tested because yeah. I'm kind of I'm still scared. It's still a pandemic right. going on. It's but it's almost just pandemic, like man. nothing. Nothing has happened. Everybody's like, oh, we're back open now. Everything is cool. Right. No, no, not at all. Oh, man, the you know, um, not to be so coy with death, but the bodies are hitting the floor, man. Like Ex exactly, uh, they, man. they're dropping. They're still dropping all over the country to the tune of thousands of, you know, of people mm. every single week. There have been weeks where Absolutely. we've had 10,000 Americans, not globally, just Americans who died from COVID-19. And yet we're opening up as if everything is good. I think I'm going to take my signal uh, on this one from China, man. And I'm going to uh, continue yes. to <laughs> lock down. I didn't really ever stop the lockdown. Um uh, kind of uh we had to move and in that process you know i got a taste of what it was like to be not locked down you're right right the world has gone america has gone on you know america's mm -hmm. just like i don't think it ever shut down for more than a month um but here we are mm. the united states is going in one direction and china is going in another one here's another headline the biden administration will propose a minimum tax on the wealthiest households now, the Biden administration has taken a lot of heat this week for several issues. This is going to be one of them because we know the most important thing in the United States of America is that the richest people in this country don't pay any taxes. I mean, we right. just if we just look at the policies that passed over uh, since 2017, 2017 is when Donald Trump and Paul Ryan and uh, Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. and all of them gave the richest people in this country 
I mean, it was a windfall. I mean, those folks were so rich after Donald Trump gave them the tax break in 2017, they started buying mega yachts, right? Um, hmm. So here we are now, uh, by the Biden administration is saying we need to propose a minimum tax. And of course, Republicans are coming out in full. For, I mean, you even have one or two Democrats. Like, I'm quite sure we're going to see um, Joe Manchin of West Virginia. I mean, possibly we'll see. I, I don't know. He, he has surprised me. No, no, he's never surprised me. But anyway, I digress. The point <laughs> is, is the opposition is gearing up because if there's one thing that this system is prepared to stop at any cost, it's not the pandemic. It's not the, the coup of January 6th. They're prepared to stop taxes from going up on the wealthy. So I'd be interested in seeing how this plays out. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and, and it sucks because here it is. I'm in the, I guess what they consider to be, man, I ain't in no middle class. I'm low middle class, I guess, mm. probably lower than Work, that. Just, just working class, bro. Working, working class. Exactly, man. And here it is. I get knocked over the head with taxes, man. And I'll be, <clears throat> we already had this conversation where I say, I'm not going to talk about my taxes. So I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> but here it is. I get hit over the head with my taxes. And so it's yep. just like, damn, I get charged where I'm ending up owing money every year. Y'all are taking out all this money from my check and I'm still owing y'all. Right. So I have right. to handle myself accordingly. Yeah. And you have companies like Amazon, you know, Walmart, hmm. all these companies who literally get away with paying no taxes. <laughs> Meanwhile, yep. my working class behind gets uh, a couple hundred dollars taken out from my check, from not from my check, but just from my bank account every month, straight to the IRS. You know, it's not going to an employee. It's going straight to the IRS because they are they are going to make sure that every single yes. month they get what they expect from my enterprising um, I'm just mm -hmm. not big enough to afford the kind of lawyers and accountants that could help me avoid taxes, but we'll right. get there eventually because I'm only going to pay what Donald Trump pays in taxes. I'll tell you that much. Um, exactly. when, when I get his kind of rich, that's all I'm going to pay. Not a dime more. <laughs> um, here's another headline. The FDA and the CDC is considering approval of a fourth COVID shot for people over 50. Um, well, um, mm. the, the flip side of this is they're also cutting uh, funding, not the uh, not the CDC, obviously, but the federal government is cutting funding for these vaccines. So if anyone has not gotten their booster shot, I don't even know if it's already too late, David, you could chime wow. in here if it's not already too late. But once this funding is cut, if you haven't already gotten your booster shot and you don't have insurance, Right. The funding that came from the government ensured that everyone could get the vaccine, no matter whether you had insurance or not. All right. So that was the number one goal that has now changed. That funding is coming to an end. And if you have not gotten your vaccine, I don't know why, uh, but if you haven't gotten your booster, which some people haven't gotten a chance to, you need to get it before the funding goes out, especially if you do not have uh, insurance. So that mm -hmm. amongst the backdrop that they're recommending a fourth booster shot for people over 50. Real quick, James, my natural inclination. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I know what you're this. about to say, man. Uh -huh. I just I, I just got to be I got to keep it real. I don't keep it real. The third shot. I was like, OK, I get it. <laughs> the fourth shot. I'm like, y'all, like, come on now. Come yeah. on now, man. My whole we thing get it right. is, <laughs> is is if they're out here pushing and, and, and pushing for a fourth vaccine or a fourth booster shot, that should already say right there, man. We're not over, we're not, we're not, we're not, not, not out of this thing yet, man. Near ending this thing. So, if we are recommend, thank you, James. James, you actually said something worth what more than what I said because <laughs> hmm. you had a point there that was really salient. You said that how are they going to be recommending a fourth shot simultaneously saying we're open for business. Everything's fine. Let's get back to normal and cutting the funding. Yeah, I'm I'm a little this is a little problematic for me, James, because, yes, every signal that the world is sending every other country, every other nation is saying, hey, <laughs> We're hunkering down. We're going to keep the funding going through uh, the rest of the pandemic because we're still in a pandemic. And yet the United States is saying, go back to work. OK, hmm. moving on uh, to the stuff that I know everybody wants to talk about. I wanted to pause before we got to Will Smith, because um, <laughs> Brother Max said <laughs> Brother Max said over the weekend, James, he said, Will Smith smacked Chris Rock so hard. He knocked Russia and Ukraine out of the headlines for a whole day. And I said, he did. 
<laughs> now that was a slap heard around the world. Now I am Literally. still in full solidarity with the people of Ukraine, but it kind of it kind of bothers me to think that Zelensky might have actually gotten an update on his phone saying Will Smith slapped Chris Rock in the middle of fighting against Vladimir Putin. James, uh, the black delegation. <laughs> this is this is this has been an interesting weekend. Let's just get to it, man. What are Already. your thoughts on all? <laughs> I mean, we could play the clip, uh, David, if you want to run it in B-roll, but this is the slap. Everybody saw it. Everybody heard it. Every, I mean, my pastors, multiple pastors talking about it. I mean, random people on the street. I've never seen yes. a story talked about as much as this. What do you say, man? Man, Ben, I was uh, went to get some Chinese food yesterday. They talking about it in the Chinese restaurant, <laughs> talking about it on the radio, everywhere, man. Social media, I opened up Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. It's the same thing everywhere. They're mm. talking about the slap. And it's so many varying opinions, bro. It's just crazy. Really crazy. Gonna, and I know we're going to dive deep into it. We're going to dive deep into it. We, Rebecca Zor, believe it or not, she's going to be. <laughs> I'm sorry. No shade, sis. I love you. <laughs> she's coming early because I asked her to. So she's going to be coming in early. How am I, I'm going to ask her early. Y'all see I'm here, right? 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm already on screen. James is here. Get Dr. O'clock, Mac, you know. <laughs> Dr. Mac was scheduled to be here early. And, you know, we just wanted to dive right in. So we are going to get to the full story uh, momentarily and get uh, a roundtable discussion. Because here's the thing, James. I feel all the ways. I, mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like I feel like if there was underlying tension between them and this joke, which obviously, if you look at Jada Pinkett Smith's face, she didn't appreciate the joke. Right. Yeah. Um, and it came at her expense and it came at the expense of her condition, alopecia, which we we've covered on this show uh, from the vantage point of, of Congresswoman. What's our sister name from uh, Massachusetts um, uh, with alopecia? Well, we've covered it several times. Rebecca has yeah. covered it several times. I can't think of our sister name. Somebody in the chat room is going to say Ayanna Presley. Thank you. Yeah, there um, we go. So it is an issue. It is an issue that we've covered, and it's an issue that is serious. Um, and we understand also, here's the other side, right? You know, jokes are told. Uh, you know, People going, I don't know. I feel all the ways. I don't know if I'm going to risk my entire, the entirety of my family fortune, because you know, one thing's for sure. Will Smith about to pay some money out. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's funny because Ben, we're not the only one that feels that way. The, even the Academy, the members of the Academy, there have been a lot of um, things coming out from them saying, okay, Will was wrong. But Chris Rock got what he deserved. Oh, then you I have others that. saying, wow. oh, yes, man. The Academy, Academy themselves, there was one tweet um, I did put in Slack as well, too, where one of the Academy members like Chris Rock should be um, happy that's all he got. Because wow. he released a documentary previously called uh, Black Hair or something about uh, hair. black good people's hair. hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good hair, which was a great movie, great documentary. But here it is, you get on stage and make a joke about somebody, a black woman's hair. So it, it's one of those things, it's it's so conflicting, so definitely it makes it seem like there's so much underlying stuff that's uh, uh, under that as well, too. Because let's yeah. not forget as well, too, y'all. I'm about to drop this on y'all. 2016, black people boycotted the Oscars. Chris Rock was the only one that agreed to go uh, host. So yeah. here it is. Yeah. He's being the only black person there. And then while he's on stage as the only black person there, he talked about Jada then as well, too. So I don't know what Chris Rock's issue oh, that's is. Right. That's with right. That's right. Jada man. Mm. But it's 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 more than what's there on the surface, bro. Honestly, yeah. at first I didn't feel that way. But honestly, now going back and looking at everything. There are some other stuff that's there with Chris Rock and, and Jada Brown. Like the expressions on the faces of the people in the audience is golden. Look at that. <laughs> you look at their faces. They're like, Will Smith? Not, look not, at the little, not the little boy. Not Fresh Prince. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, wait, wait. They're like, what just happened? And then also before we get in, before I even play the clip, I want to give a shout out to Will Packer, 
who put the entire night together. Right. Uh, he produced uh, the show and it was a you know, I didn't watch it <laughs> I just because I don't watch TV like that. But the presentation, everything was brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. and I hate that it took away. And then also Samuel Jackson getting his first Oscar. Um, you know, there were so many things that happened that night in the hell, even Will Smith. <laughs> yes. Still got and, an then, Oscar. and then not to mention as well to the, the award that Chris Rock was giving out best documentary summer of soul won that, uh, nomination and, you know, that's quest loves movie from the roots. So here it is. You had a black man that was winning an award being overshadowed by five minutes previously. Somebody getting slapped on stage. Mm. So now you got to go back on stage and, and go with that, especially he's like, damn, that was like really overshadowed everything. It overshadowed the whole night. Honestly, it really mm. did. Yeah. I like what Will, uh, what Diddy said. He said, Will and Chris are going to handle this like family. Uh, he said that immediately man. after the slap. I think we got Rebecca Zoe in the house. Yeah. Yes, we do. But Diddy's ass, Diddy, he said all of that and honestly didn't talk to either one of them. So Diddy huh? was just running his mouth, just talking. Oh, Lord. And, I, and I hate that because I, I really would have liked that to happen. But yeah, no, they everybody went on to their own different parties and to their own different events. Mm. Mm. Good morning to you, Rebecca Zor. It is eight. It is. I mean, it's super early in the morning. First and foremost, thank you so much for pulling up. And uh, Rebecca, how you doing, Queen? Good. I don't like it. A lower third is covering me. <laughs> but, Girl, um, good morning, Rebecca. <laughs> good morning. Um, yeah, it's pretty early. It is. It is early. And I, I honestly thought about calling everybody in yesterday, but I know y'all, y'all get some, you know, it was your day off. It was everybody's day off. Um, but ain't nobody going to stop honestly, talking about this. Honestly, I would have been okay coming in yesterday because it was so big and so hot. And I mean, yeah. that was really terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but I told, I Pause. told Ben, I told Ben I would have came in yesterday for sure yeah. to, to discuss this. So yeah. it would have been, it would have been because it was a top story yesterday. But not only was it a top story, it actually, I don't know where you guys were in the conversation, um, but it actually uh, had like so many different layers to it. Like yes, Rebecca, in yes. our community, I think the conversation was super colorful. And what's so crazy about it, let me put my mic over here. And what's so crazy about <laughs> it is that we, why did I feel connected to each comment? In yes, some way, mm. shape, or form. Yes, and yes, it's like, yes. I don't agree with you, but I see. It was like people were laying out things that made sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, I felt like in that particular moment, I can't even say I don't want to be a part of this conversation for the black community with the black community on this particular matter. It was when it was <laughs> when the people started chiming in that didn't quite look like us. <laughs> mm, <laughs> hello, somebody. They, you know, mm. saying they didn't quite look like us, and I just mm. felt that in that moment, every even the people I didn't agree with in the black community, we were arguing with each other. Not not me because I don't argue yes. with kids on the Instagram. <laughs> I say what I say and I walk away. Yeah. But. I saw the I saw the conversations going. I'm like, okay, that's a great argument. That's a great. I mean, I don't agree with that, but I could see where you're coming from with that. Okay, somebody challenged you on why you feel that way and you laid it down. It was when people started coming from the um, the, the 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 crevices, mm. <laughs> the crevices mm. of suburban town, baby. Mm. The, the, crevices, the cracks of the the the, the, the fault lines. The I, crevices I, of, of damn Fox News. The crevices mm. of Come January six. That's Come on. on mm. now. Talking they about started, violence. They started creeping mm. out saying, violence is not the way. If someone could have died. This is not what we should be seeing. Uh, and then somebody said, oh, you know, uh, Chris Rock was one of uh, the seven people that the white community liked. Um, and, you know, that's why they felt that they had to protect them. I said, no, they did not have to protect him only because Will Smith was one of the seven that they liked. Beloved. They were pissed off that their beloveds were, all, mm -hmm. were, were getting like we're doing this and they're black beloveds and they weren't tap dancing for them. And that's my problem. When when people in our community, even when Kanye. We don't mm. like him. Look, we don't say Kanye. <laughs> but, um, you know, even when Kanye did what he did, what did we do? We said, this. You know, <laughs> let's tap in. Let's tap in. Let's make sure that we can, um, um, <laughs> yeah. we, can, we can have this conversation amongst each other. But there were tweets like this, right, by our Black community. <laughs> Violence is not the end, never the answer. Baby, your granddaddy is an active member of the KKK. Start your activism at home. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, yes. Then we have um, Chris Rock's one joke. 
one joke was rooted in massage noir. This is something that was a conversation, texturism and ableism, um, and ableism, excuse me, degrading a black woman in a room full of her peers on live TV. The fact y'all don't see, and hold right there, David, the fact y'all don't see that as violent is beyond to me. Now, this conversation, I believe, is the one that a lot of people are on the side of and a lot of yeah. people aren't on the side of. And right. I say this, in... In my opinion, and I want to get what you guys got. Did you guys play the clip of him? Not yet. Him no, we were holding it. Not yet, no. Okay, so let's go ahead and play the clip before we get to this conversation. I want people to understand where we're coming from with this conversation. So let's play that clip of what right. happened. The slap heard across the world. <laughs> the, the, the universe. <laughs> <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, Lord. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? Damn. <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. G.I. Jane no joke that done this. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. <laughs> that was a uh, wow. greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Ooh. So we are here. <laughs> he took it. I, I got I to gotta give Chris Rock one thing. <laughs> he took it. He stood there and took it. Um, there's so, so many things. There's layers in this thing, man. It's layers. And somebody posted a uh, a still image of the slap, right? Mm -hmm. And they got it to where it looks because at first Chris Rock looks like if they like examined the whole scene where it looks like Chris is leaning into it, like he's getting he's bracing for it. So you see right there. Thank you, David. It looks like he's bracing for it. Head tucked. Arm down, same thing they do in acting, almost. So that's why I think mm. everybody thought that it was a joke or that it was scripted. But then I, I'm thinking that Chris Rock maybe thought that maybe he's Will Smith is getting ready to come whisper something in his ear, just say something to him. Yeah. But then no, <laughs> he, he whispered because then at right. one point when he slapped him, Chris Rock like he was about to pop back. I just saw that like he flinched back. Like okay, wait a minute, I gotta remember where I right. am. Right, 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 right. No, I, I didn't. I. I... You didn't feel that? What? See, everybody no. feels. What did you feel, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. First of all, I do have to acknowledge the fact that the um, uh, the Asian translator was giving her best. Now, imagine the people. Now, they over there watching another country. They over yes. here having to translate the BS, my guy. <laughs> I told you, man. We oh, we oh, oh, we probably in but Russian news right now, they and they carrying out a war. Hold this video because I gotta talk about this video too. Um, but listen, it was the fact in in the in the um the moment all of us seeing that it was the shock mm. factor. You can't tell me you weren't shocked. You may have been shocked in silence. Let me tell you guys exactly what I was doing in that moment. I saw it, I turned it off, and I went to go listen to a song that was up. <laughs> I swear. Because I didn't understand what was happening. I, I needed to really sit there and process what I saw because it was very, very confusing. Um, but in that moment, you guys, I know you guys saw what I saw, right? Mm -hmm. Before we talk about Chris, Chris's comments, Will Smith was laughing. That's right. Yeah. After he laughed, I think we kind of had a visual on the side um, of Jada wincing at mm -hmm. the joke. Yeah. And I think at that point, I think we can look at it from this point of view, if we can, because this is one of the great points that were made. Imagine the whole time, look, rolling her eyes, just through. Imagine the whole time, every time they saying something about, about, about Jada, she, it's, just, it's just Jada and Tupac, Jada and Augie, Jada, you know, Jada just out here. Jada, 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 Jada. Not your wife, Ben, but Jada Pinkett Smith. Mm -hmm. Jada, Jada. It's just, it's, it's too much. Anybody mentioned your wife, Ben, I know you could just, I seen you do this. You go crazy. Like, what you said about my wife? Exactly. Oh, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's a right. natural reaction. And we yeah. haven't seen.
seen him really do that. And he's been very like in his book trying to come out and say, I too fell in love with someone on set. And they're like, get out of here, Will. Like he's trying to like match Jada's messiness. That's that's what, almost what, it, what it's like. But in this particular moment, I felt like, oh, she ain't laughing. It's time for me to protect. It's time for me <laughs> to tap in to the, the man that she said Tupac was. But I also see a a spiral, a de- like a spiral yes. out of everything yes. that has been happening, everything that has been going on within the J- within the Jaden Will in front of us. And I can't say that we know them, but whatever they've shown us, whatever we've heard for years, we've heard so many things, and now we're seeing things, and we're like, oh, let's add our two cents. And he hasn't really said much, I would say, on behalf of Jada in in a, in a protective way. I would say, mm-hmm. but in the same I saw the sense, laugh. But with the same sense, somebody dropped something on that too, y'all. Somebody said, but and I'm, this is not a this is not the. I need y'all to understand, um, white folks who are watching. This is not the the black the black women are this or the or the black men are this conversation. But somebody did make a point. They said Will Smith has been humiliated as well, so mm. much in this relationship that we've seen in the public with Jada, his wife, so much. And has endured so much just being there. That's Had what I saw. Almost been said, almost as if he's just not a man, right? Not a like he, he's not up for the challenge as much as she speaks about what kind of man Tupac was every year. Oh, oh just the anniversary every year, she's gonna mention how much of a man Tupac was and how how he made her feel. She does and that then, every year. Yeah, every year. And then wow. August Alcina you know, being a young man and I feel like she almost preyed on him in his moment because that man was, he was down and out. That's how I felt, but that's my business. But somebody made a point and said in that particular moment, when she saw her man going up there to look a fool, she could have protected him in that moment as well. Both of them, I just feel like haven't been protecting each other and they're in this space and he's going down a downward spiral, been embarrassed like nobody's business. She really you know, think she could have grabbed him before yeah, he got to? Like he, she could have touched him, but then, you know, we have the conversation of why, why do women have to always do that in that moment? It's so right. much great conversations, you guys. It's layers, And man. the conversation of al- alopecia um, from a man uh, saying something about G.I. Jane um, and it could be her outfit. It could have been her hair. What was the context of this conversation? We all understand that it, it most likely was the haircut. Yeah. And she has been suffering with alopecia. But even in that moment, a man that made a whole documentary about black women's hair. Yeah, yeah there was a exactly. In, in, in the documentary where there was a woman that he spoke with and was enamored by who talked about her battle with alopecia. Mm-hmm. Well. So yeah, this you, is, you see what I'm saying? Everything yeah. is just like yes, uh, we're gonna let's, <laughs> and we're, real we're, quick. Go ahead. I go will ahead. say this. I don't think Jada, I think Jada actually walked out when he went right. up there. Right. So I don't think right. she was there in the um sitting down when it actually when happened. Went, when it actually happened. Because mm. at one point when he went back down and said said what he said, um, I don't think Jada gone. was there. He was yeah, yeah, she no, was, she was at the table next to him. They weren't really sitting at the same. If you look, there's another, she's kind of leaning over. They were together because when she went back to sit down, they did like a head, a head nod. She went to console her man. Like after well, I tell you what, y'all, we're gonna we're gonna dig yeah. into this a little bit more because unfortunately, this is all this is all anyone is talking about, mainly because it has so many layers and it is worth talking about, uh, especially with the accusations and the foolishness that came as a result of it. So Fox let's talk news. about that after this break. <laughs> Exactly. We're going to go to a quick break. We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show right after this. No, you just can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, no, no. No, you just can't hurt me. Y'all, I forgot to tell y'all, I met Tom Hanks once. If I did, I met Tom Hanks. He said, uh, he was rude as hell, though. He was just so rude. So I asked for an autograph, and all he wrote was thanks. Let's go over so many people here. Watch what I say. <laughs> May break my bones, <laughs> but your words can't hurt me. Oh, y'all get it now. I'm trying. 
can't hurt me. No, it just can't hurt me. No. <laughs> Hey, y'all also, I learned how to use disposable masks, like coffee masks or filter to brew espresso. I learned to use disposable masks to brew espresso because they're coffee filters. <laughs> coffee filters? <laughs> Two day in the background talking about they might shut this channel down. Man, go to hell today. <laughs> Y'all know I ain't got no damn sense, man. Y'all leave me alone. <laughs> y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Our sister from another mister will be joining us soon. <laughs> you have just heard the Robo Bubba. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, I said, let's bring us, bring us back because that, oh, that, that Robo was Bubba, Bubba. That wasn't the real Bubba. That was the <laughs> look. <laughs> <laughs> so familiar. Look, and what happened is, let me tell y'all. I apparently I lost my power cord for my mixer. So here it is. I'm up at six o'clock in the morning, just tearing this house up looking for it. And it's either somewhere in my car that I can't find it at yet, or in the ballroom that I DJed at over the weekend. Oh so Lord, I'm gonna have to go on a mission because right now I'm just like. <laughs> And I'm going to tell y'all, I tried everything this morning. I tried, y'all. I'm just like, oh, I ain't going to be able yeah. to use it. No, yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't know. Uh, I, I was like, those jokes. I think I heard the Tom Hanks one, but they still went over my head, though. Do you remember right. the, the, do you remember the punch? No. Like, I, don't, I still don't get the Tom Hanks one, man. This is like six months later. <laughs> I've been trying. I'm trying to remember, like, what was that joke? What did I say? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> all right, listen. So we got other parts of this. There's all. I mean, there's this. Will Smith sent a uh, an Instagram apology, right? And so then there was the the rumors that Chris Rock sent out an apology, which he not an apology, but a statement which he did not. We'll we'll go through that fiasco. Um, but this really the night got even more interesting, if you ask me, because um, well, Will Smith won. Was it Best Actor for King Richard? And yeah. uh, here is his acceptance speech after hitting Chris Rock. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to Will Smith. <laughs> Uh, Richard Williams um, was a fierce defender of his family. In this time in my life, in this moment, I am overwhelmed by what God is calling on me to do and be in this world. Making this film, I got to protect Ingenue Ellis, who was one of the most, the strongest, most delicate people I've ever met. I'm being called on in my life to love people and to mm. protect people and to be a river to my people. And I know to do what we do, you got to be able to take abuse. You got to be able to have people talk crazy about you. In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespecting you. And you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay. Thank you, D. Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, he said, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. I want to be a vessel for love. I want to say thank you to Venus and Serena. I just spit. I hope they didn't see that on TV. Um, I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my, all my fellow nominees. I'm not, I'm not crying for winning a, an award. It's not, it's not about winning an award for me. It's about 
being able to shine light. Art imitates life. I look like crazy father, just like they said about Richard Williams. Um, <laughs> okay. But love will make you do crazy things. To my mother, um, a lot That's, of this I'm moment gonna, is really yeah, complicated for me, but being able to love and care for my mother and my family, my wife, thank you for this honor. Thank you for this moment. And thank you on behalf of Richard and, and Orsine, the entire Williams family. Uh, Hoping Academy invites me back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, I mean, if everybody's as mixed in their opinions as that one person from the Academy, uh, I think he, Will Smith will be fine. But uh, yeah, I feel you on Rebecca. When you were saying like a spiral, I feel, I feel that spiral. Um, and we'll be joined at 845 by Dr. Nyasha. Uh, she's going to be joining us on a regular basis to have an ongoing conversation about mm. mental health collectively uh, as a group, as black people and human beings facing all the things we're facing. Um, it's interesting that this is the first episode that she's coming in on because when I watch him speak, I hear him trying to be strong, but I also see a lot of uh, a distress there. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but we'll, we'll speak to a doctor about it uh, momentarily. Um. Watching the speech, because I told you what I felt when I, um, didn't I say that? I'm just kidding, David. Um, watching the speech, <laughs> it was like me not getting what I thought he was gonna give. I love that he mentioned Anja, um, Anja New. I hope I'm saying her name right. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we I, lost your main mic. Oh. Because <clears throat> I know what you're about to say is about to be, uh, what we need to hear. We'll make sure the people hear you loudly and clearly. And, and real, real quick, while she's doing that, it these reaction shots are, are actually not they from... Me. Oh, they're not from the thing? Yeah, they're not from last night's. I mean, oh, not from man. The actual Oscars. No, I, that's not real. Because that whole oh, setup, the way they had everything Lord. set up is totally different. That's definitely not from... Oh, uh, who set us up for the, the Opie Doke? Because that's... Yeah. You, you gotta, I, when I saw gotta, it the first time, I'm like, wait, that's... That don't look like the Dolby oh. Theater. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now, all right, all right. So oh, thank sorry. you for that correction, James. Go ahead, Rebecca. Well, not all of those were. I, I don't know if the... I know Nicole Kidman, I think, was that. That was a real shot. And so was um, the... Lupita. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o. She was sitting right next mm -hmm. to him. So we yeah. saw that with our own, too. Um, Beyonce was real. There was actually one moment where she has her finger up. But I think she was having her finger up because she was having a conversation. But that was live. These are live reactions right here. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. I, I literally <laughs> feel like when he did make his speech, like, I love that he talked about in the moment. I think he was referencing that if some of you don't know, um, when uh, the woman who played his wife, uh, um, Serena and um, Venus's mother, in the, the film, King Richard, um, Ingenue, um, I hope I'm saying her name right on. I really do because I love her name. Um, but she, the woman who played her, the actor, um, uh, wasn't paid right. And so mm -hmm. she reached out to mm. um, Will Smith on the side and let him know that she was not getting paid as the other people on, on, on that were on in the movie. And she's one of the main characters. And so he made sure that she got paid correctly and also went to make sure that the other uh, people got made, uh, got paid correctly, which was amazing. So um, in that particular moment, I, I absolutely love that he mentioned that. And for him to, uh, to compare that to how he protects women and how black men essentially should be protecting women. Um, it made sense, you guys, it made sense. But then again, you just slapped five, 10 mm. out of somebody moments ago. And I don't know if you guys mentioned this, but this Oscars were was produced by Florida A&M graduate, Will Packer. Will Packer, yep. Who we know uh, is famous, and especially in our community, um, huge, uh, Tyler Perry level. These, these are mm -hmm. guys that make a lot of great uh, shows, films. You know, they have production companies that employ lots of black people. And so the Oscars said, let's try it. They said the Oscars are so white. Let's get someone to do it, right? They got Will Packer. It was going smooth. Everybody was talking about it going smooth, right? And then we get this slap 
Ben, I said that it was something like it became the source of war. It wasn't the source. It it wasn't. It was more of a, a of a friendly slap it to a duel. The man. Award. There was no. There was no peace. That, Come on. In that, <laughs> in that moment, then, so I think I think this and BET Awards ain't that bad either. I like watching the BET right. Awards, mm -hmm. but um, <sighs> in this particular moment, the hip hop award, y'all. But in this particular moment, um, I was like, dang. Not that he messed it up because white folks are watching. I'm just like, dang, like this was a great opportunity to show the, the great that black people do. But then I also thought about it and I'm like, this is our business. This is stuff that happens literally at our kitchen table, like us at the family reunions, you know, when we're going home for the holidays in December, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, or November for Thanksgiving. And we got the drunk uncle. Don't want to say that we was drunk. I'm not making assumptions. I'm just saying what I'm saying. But we got the drunk, <laughs> unstable uncle pulling up. Doing some stuff he ain't got no business doing. We got the brother or the auntie or the sister or the mom doing something like slapping five, threatening to run you over, pulling out a gun on you. I hate that it's toxic. I'm not saying it's great, but these things happen, really right? <laughs> and then we turn around. By the end of the night, we all sitting at the same damn dinner table trying to figure stuff out because you're going to eat this food. We may not talk for this time, but you're going to eat this food. We're going to have this conversation. This is this one I said is black business. You some black some business. of y'all watching it ain't gonna understand, and so you guys are gonna say it's toxic. You're gonna say this and that, and it, it might be like this might be, but at the end of it all, we gonna talk to each other. We're gonna comfort each other. In this particular moment that he made his speech, I didn't like that he didn't apologize to him. But That's sometimes right. people can be that stubborn as hell. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people can be stubborn as hell. I think that he was just going through the motions. He had just um we he was approached by uh, uh um Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry, um and then. What people aren't talking about, I know that the conversation was, why didn't anybody go to Chris Rock? You think Denzel wasn't going to talk to both parties? Right. Mm -hmm. You think mm -hmm. Denzel wasn't going to talk to both parties? There is a photo of Denzel approaching Chris Rock and having a conversation with him. What was said to him, I don't know. We don't know just yet because, again, that um, we haven't heard anything from Chris Rock or his brother Tony. Um, we haven't heard anything from them um, on that side. Uh, however, that what Denzel told him, which he utilized in his speech, makes to me Will a great damn actor. That man said, I am going to tap in. Denzel just told me this. That's money. That is money for the speech. She said, and then and I never heard Will speak in a spiritual way like that. He said, he got, everybody get real spiritual when you're in trouble, yeah. though. Everybody it's true. It's true. well, said, I've heard him, I've heard him speak like that before. He's he's yeah. on another speech. I've heard him speak like that before. I've never oh, okay. I've never yeah. heard him speak like that. He's like, God has me here for a reason. And I said, Hold on now. Denzel done yeah. tapped in. Denzel done tapped in when he said that you know, uh, when you when you get to a higher level, that's when the devil, you know, comes to attack you. That's going to be every pastor's Sunday sermon. Oh, yeah. Uh, Don't funny. let Thank you just mentioned pastors. Happen. Don't let Michael Todd utilize this slap to, to, in Denzel's words for his sermon. <laughs> that, <that's, laughs> Rebecca, you know, but listen, listen, I said uh, I, I've been uh, uh, sitting with some pastors and organizing around uh, different states. Um, I spoke with some pastors yesterday. The pastor said, had that been them, <laughs> they would have laid him out right at the altar. Will Smith would have been laid out right at the altar. It had been some pastors. I don't know how many preachers are going to preach uh, that sermon no, about Will utilize Smith. Denzel, though. They're going to utilize Denzel. They're going to say, they, you know, definitely. Gonna, well, you know, when you get to a higher level, come on, somebody. That's what we mm -hmm. can learn the thing. Oh, Shana, come on now. Get to a higher level. When you get preach, to Reverend. A Oh, you get the right uh -huh. one. You get to a higher level. All right, so let me ask you this question though. Straight up, straight, straight up and down. Straight, straight up and down. That happens to you in real person, real life. That's you. You are Chris Rock. Are you going to be able to hold your composure and not lay hands? I'm going. I'm going under the gym. <laughs> like with me, it depends right, because I have. Rough. I have anger management issues. Like I see it from yeah. both sides because I see where Will came from. Because in that moment, I probably would have reacted the same way. But then I see where Chris Rock come from. It's just like, okay, I probably would have went after him as well, too. So mm. I see it for both sides. Cause when that anger get take you over, bro, you do it's some stuff lot. like it's a lot. And you do some stuff it's that you're lot. gonna regret. So I'm telling you, count to 10. <laughs> yeah, count to 10. I don't I hate I'm the one. Like I seen it. If my man did that for me, you know, we're leaving tonight, and you know, you're gonna knock me up. On the way home, <laughs> that's in, in the same instance. 
I'm like, I you don't like that. Like that. Not because of a violence thing being shown in front of white people. That's not it. I just don't like to see. I don't like to yeah. see that. I don't mm, like yeah, to see that I at all. That. And well, yeah. listen, um, it, it, joining, it really joining us now is um, a longtime supporter of the show and a person that I've been able to talk to over the years. Um, just in terms of what does it mean to address mental health for large communities? And as we speak to our audiences, how do we address those issues? Good morning to Dr. Nayasha. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ben. We've been working on this for like a solid year. So yes. This is it has, timely now, right? <laughs> absolutely. And I, I guess it is so fitting that we are having this first conversation on the heels of what happened with Will Smith. And just for everyone in the audience, um, we, you and I, we have been discussing how we can create a um, almost like a a methodology, a program, right? A month by month mm -hmm. where we kind of look at mental health as a community um, in a processual way. Before we talk about Will Smith, because everybody's going to be talking about that forever. Let, talk about a little bit uh, about what we'd like to accomplish in terms of why we should do it in increments and, and not just talk about it one day and then leave it alone. Why do we need to talk about mental health on a regular basis? Yeah, well, you and I specifically talked about kind of rolling out a, a monthly um, series that focused on trauma education in particular. Because what we see typically is that something happens, the community is traumatized and we have people who come on and talk about trauma, um, you know, relating to that one particular incident and they try to, uh, you know, cover it all in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or even an hour segment. And we wanted to approach it in bite sizes so that the audience really could come back and refer to it and really develop a better understanding of kind of these different dimensions of trauma and how we're impacted by them, how we enact them, and, you know, maybe yeah. some steps on how we heal from them. Yeah. One of the first things, one of the main reasons, right, the obvious uh, why we started these conversations was because of the collective trauma that we're going through as a country, as a, as a species, quite honestly, with COVID-19, the lockdown, the pandemic, so much death, so much, so many plans interrupted. Um, if before, you know, just speak collectively about, rather not collectively, but speak about collective trauma and how we are, I feel like we're overexposed, but at the same time, we need the information to survive. How do we handle that that dichotomy? Yeah, I mean, I think it's best to handle it when you're not in the midst of a collective traumatic crisis event, um, mm. which I feel like we're actually in the midst of right now. Again, um, you know, people want to say, oh, this isn't a big deal, it's entertainment, but I think that that, what happened at the Oscars is emblematic of how collective trauma can show up. Mm. So because of the medium of television, we were all exposed to that traumatic assault. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things that we were going to talk about was collective trauma and vicarious trauma. That's and right. so while I might am not Chris Rock, I was not physically on the stage. I did not physically get slapped by Will Smith. Being in that proximity in terms of the viewing of that assault could set off traumatic mm. triggers for me, which it wow. did. I mean, it was horrifying. And the fact that we're not there in person doesn't mean, and I speak about this a lot in many different places, that we're not energetic beings. And so just because it happened through the medium of television, that doesn't mean that that energy didn't get into us. Mm. Missing that. So mm. it's hard for me to talk about it in abstract when we're right now dealing real time. Right. And I think even the um, the responses that I see on Twitter and I talk about the hot takes that are being offered, I feel like some of those hot takes are trauma responses. Yeah, mm. I had a couple mm. myself, if I had to be honest mm. with you, right? right. Rebecca and, and James, and I want everybody to just jump in there. So, you know, you're totally right. I'm glad that we have an expert's um, perspective on this. Um, you know, watching this, like I said, you know, there are, we, we can unpack it in so many different ways and agree and disagree, but I can say we all had our different experiences from watching it. Some women mm. I've heard, like, even what I said, if a man stuck up for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it would make me feel like, okay, great. And in the same sense, I don't like to see 
black men going at it in that manner. I just, it feels, it is traumatic. I went back to labeling when we go home to family functions. Mm. We've seen this trauma. We've normalized this trauma. Um, and so it, you're, you're totally right. But when you see, when you see Will, and as you know, you're just like us. It's something that we've been watching from TV because we don't personally know Will Smith. But, you know, when, when we see that, how do we, how do you, as a professional, describe his behavior? Mm. <laughs> well, I said, and this is where I said on social media, we all need to hit a pause button and, and take a breath, myself included. My first reaction, I had a lot of different reactions. My first reaction initially was from the perspective of a woman whose man stood up for her. And my first reaction, I talked about it with my parents. I was like, well, you talk slick, you get dealt with. That's just mm -hmm. right. right. <laughs> 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 I have to step back and be like, hmm, Niasha. <laughs> yeah, I had to do that. that way. A, yeah, was that a trauma response? And then I also thought about it from the perspective of Chris Rock getting hit. And I think what really disturbed me and what is still actually causing me to shake in my system is that Will Smith was able to do that and go back to his seat and mm. then be at the ceremonies. And that triggered another kind of victimization mm. that we often see against women where men are able to perpetrate an assault and go about their business. I mean, mm. he went about his business in such a spectacular way. I mean, you can hear it in my voice. I'm shaking a little bit. At, it's stunning to me. And then so to see the media or the social media reactions to that is so disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what I think was going on in, in um, Will Smith psychology, you know, we're not supposed to diagnose people in public and stuff. Right, our right. Clients. But I mean, I think that he was, um, his, his behavior was erratic and it felt as though, and I said this on social media as well, is that we were all subjugated to the messy dynamics of their relationship and their marriage. He yeah. was laughing at first and then he took a look at that part at Jada, right? And then yeah. saw her face and was like, oh, yeah, I'm, and, and just overcorrected, <laughs> you know what I mean, for what may have been within their relationship dynamic, a misstep on his part. For mm. And so because he misstepped and had to overcorrect, we all had to be subject part of that to that. Wow. Show. And that's where I say, you know, in multiple places, folks, we have we have got to do our healing work outside. I mean, mm. it's, it's just not fair. Mm. It's not fair. To put every the entire world through uh, mm. what they were going through. I, yeah, I feel that. That's, we um, already we just came from one of their instances, one of their situations, uh, and this is not something that we made up in the media. This time they showed us that entanglement right. and right. people who were being cheated on, people who were we were all having conversations about that, and it it was something that we had to be drugged into, and some people had to peel back the layers again of their own relationships. Um, so you're you're right, you are totally right, and um, I hate to see this being something that. We constantly have to, you know, uh, be a part of. And yes, we're going to have our <laughs> opinions of it. But sometimes, you know, you're right. And I don't think I even, I don't think I noticed it. And thank you for breaking it down that way. Like literally until you just spoke about it. Watching it, it's like, yes, the first, in the, my first reaction is to say, shoot, you know what I'm saying? You talk your mess, you're going to get smacked. Right. Who's going to jump up and get smacked down, right? Stand up for his, 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 his woman. Up. Why yeah, right it? Now. And then, And then now... <laughs> It's like, and then I did back up and I said, but I hate to see, like, I want to see more of the brothers hugging and talking to each other, but I yeah. don't want that. I don't want to see brothers like, you know, hitting each other. And that's not, I know that that happens, but like, we've all seen it and we hate to see it because sometimes it just doesn't. I, and I want to see more concern and compassion for Chris Rock. I'm very disturbed yeah. by the lack of concern and compassion for Chris Rock. So imagine, as I, again, as I said in social media, from all reports, he did not know that Jada it has alopecia. And that joke was not a joke about her medical condition. I didn't know Jada had alopecia until all right. that happened because I don't live my life around the Smiths, mm. to be quite honest. And also, so the assumption, even if she's been talking about it publicly, the assumption that we're all in the know 
uh, you know, on all the intimate details of the happenings in their life is it's a little bit arrogant, I think, and a little right. narcissistic. Right. Um, and then so, like I said, after my initial reaction of, well, you talk slick, you get dealt with, then thinking about Chris Rock, who's telling, it was kind of a lame joke, but telling yeah. a joke, and then what just getting funny? assaulted on- In front of the whole world. In front wow. of the whole world. And just, I heard, you know, before I came on, you were like, what would you have done? I don't know what I would have done. It's so stunning. It, it would have been so disorienting. You would have had no idea I mean, as I imagine, he had no idea where this was coming from. And even he says it was a G.I. Jane joke. Like, yeah. He's, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like what, what was that? And it's you so crazy what? because even when he said that, the it's like, what, what was Jada feeling in that moment? Well, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it sucks that this happened. And this is mm. not the first time it happened. I hate that this was the reaction uh, towards it. I, you know, maybe he could have done it better. It's already happened, but maybe he could have walked backstage, had that conversation, check, chin checked him somewhere else, and we would have heard about it like we heard about the elevator incident with Beyonce, and we ain't never heard about it again. It could have been yeah. something different. It could have been something that was laid out like that. And, Doctor, I would tell you, for me in my house, if that was me on stage, <laughs> Everybody, because these hands are rated E for everyone. Everyone, that's for me and my <laughs> house. <laughs> Rebecca ain't got no sense ever. For me and Listen, my house, we use the hands. Dr. Aisha, I, if you can hang out with us uh, past this break, I want to ask you, and, and I want everyone to think about this question. I, I uh, You guys made me think about this. It was that red table talk scene, right, where they were exposing to the world some stuff they probably should have talked about behind scenes and not put it on TV. I want to talk on, on the internet. Let's talk about how us exposing ourselves so much and so constantly with our hot takes and social media, we kind of exploit ourselves in a way. And I think maybe uh, Will and them had a little bit of that. Let's talk about yeah. that oh, after this. Gosh, wait. So ben, yeah. I actually can't stay because- Oh, I'm you joined, can't stay. I've joined your homeschool tribe. So it's time for home. Nice. <laughs> well, look at that. And I should have read Slack. There was the information right there. Dr. Nisha, we have to pick up this conversation when you're available again. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Thank you. Show. Love you. Love Can't you too. To Thank you back. so right. much. <laughs> Shout out to the homeschool tribe. Hey. Homeschool tribe. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the show after this. All right, y'all. Y'all make sure that you stay tuned. We got more coming next on the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. This is a great conversation, man, because there's so many varying opinions and different points, man, and everybody is making a lot of sense. With all this wilding in the chat room, I see y'all. This is how I know I see y'all. Again, good morning, everybody. Hey, it's me talking over me. No? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned, man. We got more coming up. Make sure out to everybody this morning that has joined us. Good morning, mother and father. I see y'all. Creative Impact, what's going on? Ron, Laura Estrada, good morning. Shout out brother Chuck Diesel in the building. Bro, the dragon, I see you as well, too. Good morning, y'all. That's Chris Anthony. That is very funny. Somebody said that Will Smith should apologize, of course, which he did, and his consequences should be that there should be a, a Comedy Central roast of Will Smith hosted by Chris Rock, and that should be what it is. <laughs> Mr. Stewart, good morning to you. Iris, good morning. Brother Bryce, good morning to you. Ron, I appreciate it. Too bad it's not mine this morning, but don't worry. Tomorrow will be back in there, hopefully. Promises manifesting. Good morning. William Moore, what's up, please? This is Marks. What's going on? Y'all, oh my God, I just got this. David, can you drop the music really quick, David? Can you do that? Okay, here it goes. And I'm just I'm I'm just the messenger, okay? There can be 100 people in a room and 99 won't slap you. But one will. All right, David, you can turn the music back up then. There you go. 
That was my dad jokes in the morning. Like I said, I am just the messenger delivering you dad jokes that I see all the time. And when I saw that, I saw it this morning. I'm like, I didn't see that. I don't get it. And now I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, y'all. Well, that was so energetic. <laughs> good morning, welcome to Like It or Not. We're here, we're here, we're here. That's why. Okay. Okay. Right. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I know. mama I talking know. about, Bubba, you gonna play your song this morning? Yeah. Like it or not. That's what we were missing, to be honest with you. Oh, my God, you know what's so crazy, Bubba? And my nails look really good. Wow. Um, they do. <laughs> thank you. Um, But you know what's so crazy? I had a dream about you singing that. Why? Last night. Wait a minute. What the hell? Oh, tell us about. Tell us about the song. Tell us about the dream, Rebecca. Yeah. So <laughs> she's she setting it up, car, and I'm just like, like it it's crazy. <laughs> you try to remember? T Pain. <laughs> T Pain was in the video too. Wow. <laughs> T Pain was pissed at me because he's like, Rebecca, you better go on that mic and sing something. And then I was like, you don't want me to sing, T. You don't want me to sing. But why was? Why were we? I don't know, guys, but anyways, I'm telling T-Pain that this is a true story. This is this is actual and factual. Last night, I guess I was thinking This is about, your dream. But I was homeless. <laughs> you got a lot going on. You got <laughs> more going on in this story than Will Smith's entanglement slap. I was, uh, I, you know, wow. I was homeless, y'all, because I just got this. And I think if this is all tying into me thinking about getting up for the show at 8 a.m., thinking about like it or not, joint playing, and also <laughs> me getting an email last night or, or yeah, yeah, towards last night from my... Um, apartment complex. Um, oh, and yeah. not only did they raise my rent last year for my my first my year anniversary from being here, they um, and that was they raised it two hundred dollars. They're raising mm. it now three hundred more dollars. What? Um, three hundred more dollars. And I went a month. Jesus and I, my pay has not changed, y'all. And my it it's coming to that time where I may have to move. So I went to go look. Um, for um, other place to stay in the sketchier areas of town that I've passed. <laughs> and y'all, that the sketchier areas of town are five hundred dollars more. Yeah. Than yep. what I pay now. Yeah, Rebecca. Mm. It, it makes no sense. Like Rebecca, we talk all the time. You're like, Bob, you need to come on up here. I'm just like. Honestly, I do because it's cheaper up there. Cause down yeah. here, I'm like, damn, my little slum apartment going up a hundred, two hundred dollars more. I'm like, nah, bro, it's not at this one, it's not worth it. Mm. It's Everything not going worth up it at all. It's not worth it at all. And then I'm like, mm. okay, I'm gonna downgrade and go out there. And then I looked out there, I said, they really want us to be homeless. I said this on, on, yeah. on Twitter yesterday. They really want us to be homeless, and I don't like. I don't like that feeling. And mm. then, you guys, I think that, anyways, I, I say all that to say, last night when I was dreaming, I was homeless in the dream on the side of the mountain that I look at every day through my window. <laughs> on the side of that mountain, I was homeless. My clothes were outside. And then um, uh, I came back. I came back. Um, and then T-Pain, who lives in Atlanta, was telling me, Rebecca, you better sing. And he was almost giving me that uh, anime, you better eat the cake anime. I'm like, <laughs> you gotta like him. <laughs> but, but he had me singing. And then Bubba, like, Rebecca, do that song like I told you. And I'm like, Bubba. And Bubba started singing, like it or die. <laughs> this is a true story. I guess I was thinking about having to get up in the morning, the anxiety of my rent going up and not knowing where I'm going to be in mm. about four months. Um, right. And just thinking about wanting to quit my job at the same time. Now, I feel like I was telling Ben yesterday, I feel like I'm in shackles more because of this. You, our, my pay has not changed, you guys. Where do they think I'm getting this extra money from? Anyways, I think that my anxiety was taking place in my dream. So That was a lot of dreams. Yeah. So wait, yeah. she, it was. Had, she had the I can team the Turner story in there. Yeah, She had uh, the pain in there. Sound like you had a little bit of fire heartbeat. You had a lot going on in there. I, had a lot going on. On. I think I was also thinking like maybe if I just quit my job and go sing something, I'm being discovered by T Pain. But then Bubbles like Rebecca, stop acting like you ain't got no song to sing. You know what? Did you see song. me and girl at the same time? 
<laughs> Rebecca, yeah, that might be the move. <laughs> Listen, I need coins. I cannot be out here tiger flipping for free. It don't work. Tiger, minute, tiger, is- shut up, tiger. <laughs> sleep paralysis <laughs> demon, but it's bubbing in the corner, whisper singing, like, like it or not, not while I'm pouring baby oil on, on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger, there may or may not be a video of this. I no, no, cannot wait, wait. confirm nor deny these. Wait, 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 wait. I'm just, I'm just imagining sitting there because if you ever had sleep paralysis, bro, and you can't, bro, the only thing you could do sometimes is like just, just so like, Jesus, I have a confession. Jesus, I have a confession. Jesus. Y'all, y'all remember I told y'all about my arm, right? Yeah. So. The reason all of that happened, oh lord! When I w- got back, I laid in the bed, bro. I had sleep paralysis, so my eyes are open. I'm in the bed, just laying there, and I'm thinking somebody is in my living room rummaging around, <laughs> and I'm trying to get up, and I can't move. I can't move. Bro. I can't move. So finally, when fell. I'm able to get up, that's when I jumped out the bed, oh, slipped, man, whiplash my goddamn neck, and yeah. hit my damn arm. You know Thank what? Thank you for telling us the truth about yeah. what happened. Thank you for that's, sharing that. That's um, crazy, bro. That's it's, crazy it's, for real, James. Wait, 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 this, this, y'all don't understand, bro. Yeah, scary things. I would laugh at scary. you, bro. Like, bro, I fell with such force that I gave myself whiplash and oh, compressed wow. the, the three discs, that and that's what happened okay, to my arm. Because you oh. could have slipped on something. Yeah, Rebecca. That's in like the way my bed is like. If my arm didn't hit, if I would have hit went down, I could easily hit my head. Easily. Mm. So that let me know that much force. If I was able to jerk my neck that hard, just think if I would have hit my head on the side of the bed. And it's a wood ass bed. And yeah. it's hard as hell. Now I one one <laughs> one night while I was asleep. Some crazy stuff happened when you sleep. One night I was asleep. <laughs> I jerked in the bed. I just jerked in the bed, like turning from left to right so hard. <laughs> I think I damn near broke my neck, Rebecca. but I, I woke I was up. Like, uh, I like that word. What's that? Which word, word is that? You use the wrong word, Ben. I was like, I jerked <laughs> into bed. I'm like, Ben. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, come on. Like, I like I run into the, uh, the double entendres like it's nothing, but, you know, like, okay. um, it, it just happens sometimes. Um, I switched my neck around in the bed so quickly, Rebecca, Thank that you. I almost <laughs> broke my neck, but I certainly... Gave myself uh, uh, a plan. vertigo, ver- no vertigo for like two days straight because wow. I jerked it so hard. Like, <laughs> y'all, I hate, I hate y'all. <laughs> Moving on, what are the stories we got? <laughs> no, 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 but that's that happens, I would, man. I would hate that to happens. have vertigo, I would really, really hate that because I know that makes it's you feel sick and dizzy all the time. It, so, it's, it's, it's like it's like a spinning reel, it's like the, the worst drunk night that you ever had. But, yes, man, I, ooh, that would be terrible. Alcohol. I can feel yeah. it right now. I do yeah. not like the right. lay spinning down. rooms. In a spin, yeah. like yeah. no, no, no. Oh, being like when you're really, really drunk like that, and you just decide to lay down, and just everything is just like, <laughs> like you in the damn Wizard yeah. of Oz. <laughs> yeah, that's why, <laughs> bro. That's listen, what it feel like. It's making me nauseous right now. Don't do that. It's yeah. making me think about drunken nights. <laughs> no, right. It's, it's really uh, it's it's one. That's why I could never look up. Like for years, for years, I could never like lay down. People, you know, lay down in these on the beach and just look up the sky. Man, I couldn't do that without feeling like the earth was spinning on its axis on me. So, uh, yeah, mm. I, I feel you, James. That stuff at night is just throw you off. And, See, that's very oh, scary. I would hate, I would hate uh, for people who sleepwalk and things like that. I know that's very, very scary. Like, yeah, Lord, woof. And mm. then sleep paralysis having, you know, me, it's me calling Jesus without calling Jesus. I'm in mm. the dream. I'm thinking, Jesus! <laughs> right? Jesus! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, was I saying that out loud or was that in my head? <laughs> Why? Oh my God. I'm just saying Jesus, though. Jesus! Jesus! Because look, the whole time I'm laying there, I'm thinking to myself, hey, get out of my house! Get out of my house! I, mean, I ain't saying a damn thing. Get out of my house! <laughs> oh, I thought I was all the way. Oh, man. For people I who mean, are saying, though, what do you guys say? I would love to know. Like, I just know. I mean, uh, it's weird. It's crazy. What are you saying in, 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 like, when you're look, fighting listen, the sleep paralysis? They, look, what are you saying? Like, what, what are you all saying? I would love to know. The <laughs> same thing you say, Rebecca, no, which is crazy. Say Jesus. Now, they're saying something else because if... You know, those who are atheists and stuff, you know, whatever. Like, because it's crazy to me. I'm like, help. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Jesus. You know that I'd be like, 
wait a minute. Shit. How many people? I wonder how many people actually struggle with sleep <laughs> with like because uh, they, they they got uh, they have all the different names for it coming up. They used to call it sleep paralysis. The witch got your back. Uh, uh, uh mm. something else. It like the there's all kind of crazy stuff they chest. used to call it. The demon sitting on your the chest. The demon yeah. sitting on your chest. That's it's, the one. It's um, a lot. It's a lot. But anyway. How did we get on that? My God, we just, we just went on the whole I'm a, riff I'm a, on I'm that tie, I'm going to tie it into this. I'm going to end it with this, though, for all you guys who are in <laughs> a relationship. We don't have to tie it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for all you guys that's in a relationship and stuff like that, be careful who you have in your bed. In your <laughs> home, they're going to leave them spirits. They're going to leave them spirits. The next thing you know, you don't know why you You're going to be bubbling with uh, baby oil and... <laughs> say, what the was little, it Tiger said? Put the Tiger little demon sitting like, on your chest on muscle. Like it, <laughs> I don't <laughs> The we ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to go. Down. That's scary. Y'all know, y'all know I'm scared of the dark. And I know right. I just told you that I had a dream with Bubba singing that. I don't like it. <laughs> Shout out to Tiger, sleep paralysis demon, but it's Bubba in the corner whispering, singing, like it or not, while pouring baby oil on his chest. I. I'm done. Let's get back to Will Smith. It's a little, okay, Will, what, Will Smith manages to be a little bit less messy than this. Go ahead. Rebecca. Oh, not you saying I know that spirit when they pull out the Cash App card. I left that man back in um last year. Anyway, um, oh. I guys about that man that pulled out the Cash App card. We'll talk about that some other time. But at the end of the show, I'll give you guys an update on my dating That's life. too low. That's but too meta. That is I too meta. Go ahead, Rebecca. I wanted to go ahead and um wrap up this conversation about um about Will Smith and just give these these quick updates so that we can talk about this other particular moment that happened um, at the mm -hmm. award show. But um, um, Will Smith did issue an apology, official apology, yeah. um, an official apology. Uh, he took to his Instagram yesterday um, and issued an apology saying violence in all of its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are a part of the job, but a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line, and I was wrong. I was I am embarrassed, and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I would also like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees, and everyone watching around the world. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and my King Richard family. I deeply regret that my behavior has stained what has been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I mm. am a work in progress. Sincerely, Will. So, mm. that gave me... Yeah. That gave me publicist PR get on. Mm. Right? Somebody just and, said that in the chat. And too. usually it does. And Will doesn't give me that usually. That's what I'm saying. I feel like he after and mind you guys, I need I need you I need to be clear if we have those photos. After the award show, this man went to go party. He took a family photo with his family after the fact. And it was mm -hmm. strange enough that Will, right before the award show, had posted him and Jada were going to choose chaos <laughs> at the award show. Um, oh. Yeah, if you go on his page, um, you know, he, he has this whole post uh, uh, um, between him um, him and, and him and Jada. This is Will Smith yesterday. After, yeah. At the, uh, his little Oscar, Oscar party or something, yeah. He thought they getting jiggy with it. <laughs> I would have gone home. <laughs> so, I would have carried my yeah, ass. Man, I would have went out to go party too. Chris, we know that's where Chris Rock was. And so after this, or, or we don't know that's where he was, but right. after this, um, you know, happening, he now the day goes by, and he starts to see that this conversation has gotten so big. Yeah, oh, yeah, so big that everybody is taking part in the conversation. The apology came. And I'm like, finally, but now this thing is there. People are saying he like, you know, why apologize now? Own it. Now they're telling him just to own it. LAPD mm. asked Chris Rock um, the night of if he wanted to press charges. Chris Rock declined. After Chris Rock declined, because remember, everybody on social media, everybody um, 
that I care about opinion. Um, <laughs> the ones that I didn't care about were making uh, the commentary that he needs to go to jail. He needs to go. He needs yeah. to, because he can assault someone. Now, I can't say that they were, you know, white people were the only ones having that conversation. We were too, but they were saying yeah. that he needs to go to jail. He's violent, whatever the case may be. So I believe that the Academy thought that if Chris pressed charges, they wouldn't have to do anything more mm. because he would have pressed charges and there goes, you know, that. That is not something that they have to deal with, you know, and Chris did what he needed to do. They provided the LAPD at Chris's service and things like that. But when Chris declined, now the Academy was being pressured by people yep. and saying, what is the Academy going to do? Take the Oscar, take the Oscar, right. take the Oscar away. And so now the Academy has led an investigation into the events yeah. of that night, which is interesting enough because they allowed him to get up on stage, assault, uh, slap five, you know what I'm saying, into Chris' mouth, come back, sit down, sit down, stay for the rest of the show so that he can now come and get that award. And now they're saying they want to launch an investigation. Make yeah. it make sense for you <clears throat> and I, because I don't know. And also, an update on the apology that Will gave in the same instance some ball head of Scalaway <laughs> went Jesus Christ. to Facebook and created this apology. Oh, the fake one. Viral, yeah. Viral, an yeah. apology from Chris Rock or a statement from Chris Rock um, apologizing yeah. and him being a comedian in this <clears> world <throat> and having to go through what, you know, comedians go through. And so many people, even people with blue check marks, were now retweeting this fake apology. Yeah. Um, but his reps have um clarified that that is That's not, not him. him right he has yet right. to make a statement publicly regarding the matter and there's that because it's got i think he's do you i i think he's um he about to sue the this the dirt off of will smith like i ain't gonna be you think will so? smith need i uh he i don't be, think so mm. <clears throat> It, it, he is now I, I, a meme. He like is as much as I like to give Chris Rock props for sitting there and standing there and taking it, you know, like a G. He's got memes all over the world now of him getting smacked next to Batman and smacking Robin. It's it's uh yeah, uh there's a lot of pain and suffering that he could sue for if he chooses to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't think he will. Honestly, I, I think that. The only reason a lot this of this now is, is this escalating. Was apology. This was the fake apology. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, fake only apology. thing is, is escalating so much now, I think, is because everybody's talking about it. Because here it is day after, two days after. Mm -hmm. You got the Academy now wants to do an investigation because you got all these other comedians that are pressuring, like Rebecca said, pressuring the Academy and then pressuring everybody else to do something where, you know, Chris and Will handle it like they wanted, that, like they wanted to handle it. Now, every nobody really knows. I know we don't know if Chris and Will had a, a conversation after anything or if they've talked since then. But definitely, I don't think Chris is going to press charges because Chris didn't know what was going on with Jada. Now he does know. Now he does know the implications of it because he covered it in the, the, the Good Hair documentary, especially he talked to someone with alopecia before. That's right. So now I'm, I'm aware that he right. knows. So it's just one of those. It's just so many damn layers. And yeah. um, oh damn, Rebecca, you said something else. Oh yeah, that statement that Will released definitely that was a publicist because as much activity as Will has been doing on TikTok and all his social media, I really yeah. think Will would have taken the one of those to do a video to apologize. Yeah, really, that that's straight up publicist um statement. He there. probably still got adrenaline running through his blood when he consider all the stuff, all the implications and stuff. So it definitely was a publicist. I doubt very seriously yeah. he was able to sit down and write anything, uh, let alone that it, statement. And and I say about the moment, y'all, and I've been wanting to say this for the longest, it was one of those moments of a uh, mess around and find out. Mm. Mess around and find out. I feel like mm. it, was a, it was a moment of mess around and find out, but then it was also a moment was, damn, I can never do right for her. Never. And and exactly, uh, Rebecca. And then he was just like, you know what? Let me go ahead and stick up for my and woman then now. I feel like when he sat down, it was an embarrassment for him. And then I feel like he had to... He is somebody who, as much as he feels... We feel like he's so open. He is such... He's wearing masks. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. You can see the hurt. You can see that hurt on this man's face because a lot of the stuff that he's doing is crazy. You're so like, right, Rebecca. I think that he needs to, and 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 this is the mental health check-in, y'all. Like, mm. I love all the conversations that we have surrounding this. I love mm. how we're talking about protecting black men. I love that it also has st- or started off with protecting black women, but I love that it also has g- gone into an area of protecting black men. I mm-hmm. love that it's talking about loving and reassuring and confronting and, um, you know, um, just all of that. Healing. One, right? Healing. Yeah. It- but I think, guys, we're looking at what we see in Kanye. Now, Kanye's erratic behavior just is in different. It's, he shows it differently. What we see here is a man that's breaking down before us as well. <laughs> He's yeah. breaking down before us. Yeah. I'm not a celebrity. But I'm not a celebrity. Y'all been you 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 are bubble. They love you in the comment section. But I'm saying I I me coming into this game getting my first million on a view and I got ripped apart when I first got into the politics. On my first um video they got a million views. I got ripped apart. Ripped like ripped. And I think I was like, oh my God, I'm a loser. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I they call my braids carpet hair. I'm like, oh my God, they want to come rape me. I'm just like, oh, did I have to yeah, come on saying, here? Yeah. And I had to go in front of those people, those, those white people that I worked for, and act like nothing was affecting me. Yeah, I was breaking down. I was breaking down. I was breaking down. And they, they just said, Rebecca, you're a strong black woman who don't need no man. And I felt like mm-hmm. I had to keep on coming on every day and showing that a mask, a mask, a mask, a mask. I was breaking down until one mm. day I went in there ready and I cussed everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't okay the way I did it, but I, it's just like I was so tired and I was tired of yeah. being just I couldn't say anything. I feel like, honestly, I say that to mm. say like, like these people who have all this, I would hate to be someone in a position, you know, where it's like you have all the stardom and you get yeah. to a point where like you can't control the people who are tapping into your business, people who are, are making comments about things that you may say when you're through, you're thinking you're being open with your fans and Ooh, whatever. And right they're now. coming in and they're having all these opinions. You can't control it. They're having opinions on what your, your, your baby girl looks Ooh. like. They're having opinions mm. on your son. They're having opinions on your wife. They're having opinions on your mama. They're having opinions on her mama. They're having so many different opinions, but that's what happens in the space. But it still does not take away from what could be happening inside. And that's what I also see happen to Jada. Jada's going through something that she talked about, but I don't think it has been in, in, in a lengthy way where it's like, this is this was what we had defined Jada as, her having this um, condition. You know what I'm saying? But I can't mm-hmm. say it didn't hurt her. It was so much to unpack here in this particular moment. Hurt people, hurt people, man. Hurt people, hurt people. Mm. That's all we saw around the room. Everybody's. I mean, that's that's just America. I mean, but uh, I'm. It. <clears throat> when I woke up, I didn't watch it. When I woke up and I saw it, I was like, "Hmm, this makes mm. sense." That tweet this, right there. This, which one is it? The question is rhetorical. Why is it that white feminists have labeled Will Smith's behavior toxic masculinity, but not Chris Rock's pattern of belitt- belittling Jada Pinkett Smith and black women as a whole? Hmm. Um. The jokes that Will Smith has made, we could say the same thing. Like, he, he's a comedian, too. He's acting. If we look back in some of the things that he acted in and what he said, people say the people that um, Will Smith dated and whatever, it's a lot that we can, like, we can literally, I ain't, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but on Twitter, you can call me a psychologist, baby. You can call me, you can call me a lawyer. You can call me an investigator. You can call me all kinds of things. What they said just now, that tweet made sense to me. But at the same time, Will Smith, we can call him out for same the, the same things. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Is everybody going in circles? Like, what about this? What about this? What about this? Yes. What about this? It's and, all... but, but we're allowed to do that in this particular moment in this um in this conversation. And when I say we, I'm talking about black people. Uh, we're allowed to go in circles in this conversation, but we we have to. There's there's somebody's going to have to um step out and make it like just cut the circle in half and call it a day. We're going to have to end this conversation at some point, but mm-hmm. this has brought about so many different layers. And this is the thing I'm trying to tell everybody. Black people are not a monolith. We don't believe in all the same things. We don't carry on the same ways. We can we can look at a situation and, and re- that's what I want to say. We all can relate to this situation in some way. Yeah. yeah. Some way different, too. 
some different. Yeah. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like what Rihanna, mm, like me mm. boycotting Rihanna's panties. It it's, wasn't invited. <laughs> it's like Chris, come Chris. on, man. Like, what is this? And then there was, I don't, I just want to know what it is with Chris going after Jada because it's happened multiple times. But yeah, 2016. Then you had he went under will smith's comment that he made on his baby's mom's page saying that he loves her and thank you for being the mother of his son and he's commenting and she commented back saying i love you too thank you to will and jada for uh, thank you jada for being an awesome co-parent and everything else and then chris rock came in and commented was just like damn that's the best baby mama i've ever seen you must be doing it was just like what is going on Mm. so it's like they say three times a charm I've seen um, uh, Dave Chappelle say worse. I've seen Eddie Murphy say worse. I've seen Cat Williams say worse. And, 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 and Chris Rock is a comedian. I've seen white comedians open up at the Oscars saying God knows what worse. Saying things that are racist. Like, but they think it's just so funny. And this is where I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm not saying what he said was right. No, no, I ain't saying what he said was right because I'm saying like that lady, what I saw when he said that was pain from yeah. Jada's face. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've like, he's a, I don't think he said anything that he thought he was saying to really pierce her soul. We've heard him say worse. Chris Rock has said mm, worse. I think Will Smith being a highlight of the Oscars was somebody to go ahead and make a joke to because, you know, we're at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. He's going to go ahead and uh, make a joke too, just, just, just like when you go to a comedy show. They're going to get that person in the front row with the shiny jacket. They're going to get that person. <laughs> they going to do that. Yeah, right. I, and again, I'm, I'm not saying it was right. The slap wasn't, for me, that whole that whole thing was just messy. It was just in poor taste. It was something that just ricocheted out of control. Um, How long I, do you think people are going to talk? Because I don't think... I don't. I think the way our news is working, we ain't gonna talk about this long, right? I no, think there's I'm, I'm just so much craziness is happening at the end of the week. I'm ready to get. I'm ready to. Nah, I, I feel like we need to be Wednesday, 12 p.m. sharp. Move the hell on. <laughs> now nah, you know it's gonna go to the end of the week, especially yeah, they still Chris, doing that investigation stuff. To speak up on Friday, it'll be a whole other thing. But Jesus uh, Christ, right. please speak I, up tomorrow, uh, Chris, so we can get this out the way. Ahead, I know, right? <laughs> right, then. And the conservative view, this is where I were ended, though. The conservatives have taken this on like they always take on something. Of course. Um, and they have taken it on to say that, look what's happening. There is violence, uh, you know, <laughs> bringing, you know. And they've even gone as far as saying, you know, having Will Packer produce a show, this is what it brings. You can't tell me that's not a racist comment. Crazy. But, um, you know, Will Packer is black. <laughs> Again, once again, for those of you who don't know, Will Packer is black. And he produced this, the Oscars. So this is the first, right? This is a moment. This was something that was groundbreaking. There were so many things like Quest Love winning an Oscar. Yeah. Those, those were yeah. moments that I feel like that were taken. Um, uh, Samuel L. Yeah, Sam, Samuel Jackson, um, who, who won an honorary Oscar. And it was given to him by Denzel Washington. Uh, these are moments that were, 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 were also um, overshadowed by the slap. We call him at the slap. Um, You know, um, there were so many other moments that happened in that night. The fashions, uh, the the awkwardness of Meg the Stallion coming out to talk. We don't talk in the remix, so we don't talk about Bruno. Um, But you know what, Paul's had to say. I'm glad you got there because the whole song itself was just off. Like Megan, Megan was the Megan was the best thing about that. But the whole song itself was off. Like everybody I've talked to, and even on social media, is just like the whole thing was just the performance. You talking about the performance? Just the whole song, everything. Okay. It was oh, no, the song I'm, in the movie <laughs> makes sense to me. No, no, he's talking about the. Uh, the yeah, I'm talking about at, at, at the, at the, the yeah. way it was performed. It was yeah. just totally off from a music uh, music standpoint. It was just. It was just. It was just off. Yeah. Mm. It just yeah. it just wasn't good. It didn't yeah. come over right. We lost your camera, but yes, you're, you're yeah. right. It was very. It was a. It was an eerie moment. It was a very. We yeah. lost your camera too, Ben. It was an eerie <laughs> moment. And, and, <laughs> Let's go to break. What the- <laughs> we don't been on since eight o'clock. We gotta restart. We gotta take the battery. Gonna- <laughs> but um, but um, it was an eerie moment in that time. But I'm saying a, a lot of those 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 um moments were over overshadowed. But um, it's the conservatives who are taking it and and saying that it's all about um. 
it was made about violence. Um, it was yeah. all about violence. It was whatever. But then black folks did come back to their seat and watch the rest of the show. White they folks did. sat there for the show as well. Um, the show did the show continued. Let's be honest. So, and the show was very was running more smoothly than it did last year. I need people who are making commentary um, commentary about um, his actions and are saying, you know, all these things that oh, this is the Oscars are changing all these things, um, and it's 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 been violent. Let's talk about back in the 1930s, I believe, when the 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 um, and I can't get her name in my head right now. Ben, you know it. Um, you might know it, Bubba, but the woman who plays Mammy in those roles had to oh, yes. sit in another room outside yep. of the Oscars mm -hmm. while she was nominated because they did not want black presence in the room. Right. Let's talk about the moments when um uh ho hold the music really quickly. Let's talk about the um the moments when um when these, he's trying to play you off like you want to ask us. And give give me a moment. Um uh it, let's talk about the time when um you know a woman had stood up up there and talked about um Native Americans. And you mm. know their inclusiveness, and them them saying that they needed to her bringing awareness to their issues at the Oscars, and a white actor, and I can't remember his name, pulling in and trying to you know and literally go on stage and go off on her, saying boo boo. It was just a mess. But let's talk about those moments. We're gonna take a break, and we'll bring the conversation back. And then I want to show highlight a specific moment by the one and only Tiffany Haddish. Who was reading somebody their rights at the Oscars as well? Wits. <laughs> <Wet. laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. We got more coming up next year on Like It or Not here on the Benjamin Nixon Martin Show. David has the instrumental music playing. <laughs> And while we're here, we can talk about it as well, too. Beyonce did her thing, which was also overshadowed by everything else. Beyonce did very well. Me, old man, trying to pass. I love that performance. It gave me a uh, Kobe and Wing game performance, but it was awesome. Beyonce, once again, did her thing. Banana, you in the wrong, you in the right place. You know you've been here before. Don't act. We just talking about something different today. Alicia, good morning, Alicia. Was nominated for a song from the game, which you call Be Alive. Say good morning. Right now, yes, it did, but you already know the reason that is is because We Don't Talk About Bruno is one of the most dragging damn songs ever. So. That is the main reason. And let's be honest, Encanto wasn't even all that. I mean, the songs were good, but I mean, Encanto was good. I mean, Encanto was good, but Mitchell's Wrestling Machines was much better. Exactly. I'm so sick of talking about them damn people up there on Capitol Hill who ain't doing what the hell they supposed to. It's good to talk about something else for a change. Laura Strada, most definitely you can look it up on YouTube. They got the performance there. And then y'all can also look up the performance, you know, fucking Paul Bruno as well, too. There you go, David. I just uh, I'm saying it back to you. Laura, 
if you haven't heard the Bruno song, you should definitely listen to it. <laughs> That is the point, that is the goal that I am going for. Infinite content, what's going on? Oh wow, that's what it looks like. All right, y'all, let's get back to it. Y'all, welcome back to the stream. We're back to it. And then, Jameen. Uh, Rebecca. <laughs> morning, Shady Dragon. Good morning, y'all. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. <sighs> we are in the last 20 minutes here. Um, Rebecca, you were in the middle of making some thoughts and some comments. And I know there's a couple more clips that we have coming up. Um, and I'm with you. We're going to cover this. I'm glad we covered it. I wish we were on yesterday, but we weren't. Speaking of, um, in about two weeks, we'll be. Do I'll be doing uh, some Monday interviews and different things. So we'll have some Monday shows coming up. But I think after tomorrow, um, unless, unless Chris Rock do something, if Chris Rock don't make a move, I, I think they. I think this might die down. He put out his publicist statement, so uh, you know it might die down. What do you think? It, it might die down. Um, yeah, I don't think so, y'all. I think it will. I mean, <laughs> like, like I said, about it, but I'm giving it the end of the week. Nobody's canceling will. Yeah, <laughs> like, let's be let's be honest. Because I mean, it's so Oscar, many. Though. They ain't gonna take the Oscar. They already but, said they're not gonna take the Oscar. No, they're not. Um, Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg is on that board, and she said herself she they're not gonna take the Oscar already. They've already discussed that part of it. Okay. It's, it's, it's an argument that can that can happen because um, like the um the picture that was dropped in our Slack, you know, Harvey Weinstein, all these other people, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk about them. Um, and then mm. he, uh, and I wanted to he uh, clarified for me. Um the Native American woman uh, who was mocked by Clint Eastwood at the Oscars, um, he wanted to literally run up on stage and hit her. And that oh, was yeah. John, I know Wayne. Was John, Wayne. John Wayne, yeah. yeah. And so that's what I was talking about. But these are instances I'm talking about historically the Oscars. That's why we had things like the Oscars so white. This was the point I was trying mm -hmm. to make. So when we have yep. white conservatives talking, having these conversations and uh, trying to say that we're, you know, trying to make the... Um, accusation or the rhetoric or the talking points that black people are indeed black men are mm. indeed threats and um they're violent yep. um you know that's not a conversation for you to have and historically down the line of your super white award show mm. there has been a lot of things that have happened amongst your that's award right. shows that have been hmm. violent emotionally hmm. physically um you know what i'm saying so we can't verbally we can't <laughs> Say that y'all was just at the damn Capitol on January six. That's right, right. Don't right. you ever tell us nothing about anything being um violent, and then the nerve of them to take a speaking point because this is what they do over there. They took <laughs> a speaking point from what was his name, Shannon Sharp, when he was on um, it was it First Take or whatever their show is mm -hmm. called now. Uh, I was watching that live actually, um, and I heard him say. When, as black men, there are three things when we say to each other, when we use the N word to each other in a different way, when we, uh, there go them, um, them damn crows in this background. You saw that bird fly. <laughs> <laughs> them crows are, yeah. <laughs> it's getting I thought y'all heard it, but you saw it too. <laughs> it's, saw getting, it too. Uh, it's, it's giving Alfred Hitchcock. That's some, that's, some Florida, that's some Florida stuff. But I need to, um, um, what was I talking about? Oh, Shannon Sharp, the three points Shannon of black Sharp, men. So Shannon, you know, said that you know, uh, being called, you know, by a, a man that don't really care for you, the n word, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, he said, we know historically as black people, getting punched is one thing, but getting slapped is another. <laughs> because he's like, historically, we got slapped out of disrespect mm -hmm. when we talked crazy or whatever to the master. You know, you know him dropping points. So he said those things. He made those points early in the morning. 
He made <laughs> those points. And then he said, as a man, getting slapped is the utmost disrespect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, so I would have mopped the floor. You know, he was talking. He said, I would have beat that man. In. But then I go down later on in the afternoon, and I'm seeing this viral clip of a Fox News host saying yeah. <laughs> the same thing, but saying oh. it in a way where black men happen to be violent. Mm. Uh. How uh, a man, Will Smith, can just get up and walk up to uh, one of the uh, hosts and smack him and, and go and sit down. No, we can have that conversation, but the point that you're trying to make, you stole from somebody else. Right. And then he said, he said, oh, when you slap someone, we you, we know as men that that's a, that's a disrespect as men. I'm like, see, y'all can't even get your own points in order because y'all violent. Y'all was over there at the Capitol on January. That was yesterday. Yesterday. Hello. I literally was on the hill telling them, why y'all don't want to talk about what happened on January 6th no more? They're like, oh, oh, we talked about it already. I'm like, no, that was just January. We in March. Just the other day. Why, why, we, can't, why we can't talk about that? Just, just the other day, day, y'all. Just the other day. Just um, the other day. Here's the thing, though. Um, January of last year, it feels like it feels like yesterday. <laughs> it, it was well, yeah, no, it's still yesterday. We ain't gonna let you forget. We ain't gonna let you forget. I know what you mean. Um, the thing is, was it wasn't even that. It, there was nothing about that that screamed gangster to me or thug or anything of the sort. It screamed Hollywood to me. It to, didn't. It to, <laughs> It just it, it, it screamed oh. more Clark Gable than Suge Knight. It just didn't. It it it, it screamed like a, a a smack that you would get out of going with the wind, and less out of you know my pimp hand is strong. I didn't feel. I didn't feel. I didn't feel a lot of um, heat. <laughs> it, on it, that, it, you know, it gave me if messed around and find out was a person, and it just happened. It's like and like Rebecca said, is at the family reunion. So you think he uncle. calculated? He calculated a lower amount of strength. Like he was like, okay, I'm up here. <laughs> I don't know about lower amount. His Instagram. He has this Instagram where he's doing this with the right hand before the show because he's doing yeah. the outfit chain. So he's like, it's like looking like he's doing this. They say he was working that hand out. <laughs> No, oh, you know shit. what scene it was? Wait, wait, do we have a still shot? Can we get an image of, of him smacking? Uh, remember the movie Twitch? Shout out to our producer, Josh. You mean Hitch? Who, Hitch, Hitch. Uh, the movie Hitch where he smacked uh, uh, the, the actor from, what's what's that? What? Mall Cop. Paul Blart, the mall cop. He has a scene. Will Smith has a scene with him where he smacked him with about the same amount of energy as he does smack Chris Rock. From my yeah. opinion, but you know, yeah, right. it's it's just like Chris Rock was the just the drunk uncle talking about the nephew over there bro, with the wife in the <laughs> hill. Hey, look at you. I see you over there, GI Jane too coming out. And then the, uh, he said, "You know what? I'm sick of you, aunt." And he slapped me. <laughs> That's what or, it like. could have been Chris Rock was over there showing you what his new talents were at the um, you know, at the family cookout and everybody knows him to be the funny guy and then oh the drunk God. uncle was already had something in the system and everybody already was saying the drunk uncle and he you know him he got issues over there with his wife it was already being <laughs> talked about the whole night nah, hell no and this person done came up and made his little joke because everybody laughing at his joke <laughs> now he done made a joke over here oh and man the drunk uncle said ooh because you know <laughs> what honestly this did happen to me in college where Ben, I think you already gone. And I was on a, we were on the bus. It was like three, four o'clock in the morning. We were getting ready to go on the band trip. And I'm tired. I'm drunk as hell. I'm already on this bus. So we had this one kid, this one dude that's in our that was in our section who was the comedian of the bunch. Mm. And so, and it's the if I think about it, it's damn near the same thing. So he's going around on the bus talking about people. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's laughing. So he gets to me. And mm. he was like, <laughs> Bubba, I heard that you gay. I heard you done it. So he kept going. So the bus just like fell quiet. Nobody's laughing at this point because Whoa. it was like one of those things where Bubba is not out the closet and Bubba mm -hmm. don't talk about his business. But mm -hmm. then you decide to want to talk about it to get some jokes. So, bruh, me, I said, Jay, you need to shut the hell up, bro. You need to shut up. So it was one of those things. Mess around and find out. I did everything I could. I jumped over bus seats and I'm about to go for this man. At that moment, <laughs> I'm just ready to slap. Mm. Literally, did I you get hands on him? Like I wasn't there for that one. Did you no, get hands on him? I did not because uh, my frat brothers and everybody on the bus you. held me back. But mm. I did sit down and I did talk my my stuff a little bit more because I heard that you let like to let people climb your back too, you little punk ass. <laughs> you don't talk about me like that. 
<laughs> I got mine. And everybody said, they laughed at what I said. I'm like, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes no sometimes it be like that I, it does you know. and, and that's why i guess i i don't say i i see it from both points because he yeah. was wrong as hell but i in in the moment is just like but the I, and i kind of do this myself is is you got to think about where you are who yeah. you with and who's around mm -hmm. some things you just at, what you at, represent at sometimes what you represent you just can't yeah, go up there you, and do did it did you laugh first though did you laugh first when they made that joke, joke about you oh. no me no, yeah. I shut the hell up. I'm like, exactly. It's, it, it, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's one of those things like I shut up. I'm like, no, now you coming to me, bro. I don't like that shit. Because ain't nobody talking about me. Y'all know I don't talk about nobody. Y'all do nothing. But now you want to talk about me? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now now I got to fix you. And that's, that's <laughs> how I felt. Mess around and find out. <laughs> Mess around, around and find, find out. out. Yep, yep. <laughs> that is the uh that is the the way of the world. Did y'all see the guy, the actor from uh Black Messiah? He played uh he he didn't play the um Daniel he also, he, No, 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 no. He played the other character. He played the guy who snitched on uh Fred Hampton. Uh, but he commented oh, on man. it <laughs> and he was in his fur coat. <laughs> He's just sitting there like a G talking about, you know, that kind of thing kind of happened, you know, around where where we come from. That you know, stuff like that might happen every now and then. Basically saying fools get smacked around the hood where you come from. It was, I wish we had that clip because he was, it just sometimes, it just happens. And sometimes okay. it costs you a lot of money. I don't think Will going to get out of this without paying some money for this. I, I just don't think he going to, I think he going to get sued real good for this. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think yeah, I don't doubt think he's gonna make it out without paying Chris Rock some money. No, he's not. He ain't gonna pay. Money. No, you're gonna sit down and have a man to man. I promise yeah, you. Yeah, honestly, um, and, and I don't know if y'all heard what I said. Everybody's saying that the way that Will needs to apologize is that uh, the a Comedy Central roast of Will Smith, Chris Rock is gonna be the goddamn most. No, it is, I, it's I, very I fitting. I don't. Even, I feel like yeah, maybe in a few years, right? I think right now they need to really have. A personal man to man. We don't need to hear the conversation. It's gonna die down. We're gonna find something yeah. else because that's how we are as the people nowadays. Hate to say it, but we're gonna find something else to go and make. But by, a by, by about. Thursday, Kanye West is gonna be back. He's gonna. Somebody's gonna do <laughs> something. Can't, Kanye can't take um, the moment out being in the spotlight. It, yeah. Oh lord. Like damn, Will, this was my time. You know. Right. And, and so, but but no, seriously, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find something else to to really get get at. Maybe uh, Kamala might come out of the woodworks and say she's black. I I mean, at this at this at this rate, uh, the aliens have come down. I mean, we've got everything on our bingo card. Something since might this happen. pandemic started. We don't, we don't know, but anyway, um, we'll be talking about something else by Friday. Yeah, so let's talk about something else now. Um, also, at the award show, I want to show you because I love seeing. <laughs> I love to see. <laughs> Black women <laughs> reading white women they write. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Tiffany Haddish, um, Tiffany Haddish, and this is this is the and, and the woman meant no harm. I'm, I'm gonna just say this. Um, yeah. the host of the 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 show didn't mean any harm. However, um, when you've come up in the world and you are now a woman of luxury, you want people to speak to you as such, the same way that these hosts speak to all the other uh, women of luxury of uh, 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 who are white, you get that same respect. Tiffany Haddish made sure that she demanded her respect. And she did it in a comedic relief kind of way. But if you know, you know. Let's take a look. Mm. Do a little, a little costume change. A costume. Um, I, I'm not wearing a costume. I'm wearing Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> it's called an evening gown, darling. This is not. No one's paying me for this. I paid for it. It's custom. Thank you. Time of death for me right now. You look gorgeous. This is not an acting gig. This is my life. <laughs> this what fame look like. This is what success look like. Come on now. This is what money look like. This is yeah. what it look like. It's what it looks like. This is what it look like. When is your book coming out called This What It Look Like? And I will just read the entire that book. That book's not coming no time soon, but I curse you with joy will be out in November. Okay. <laughs> and Layla, the last black unicorn will be out next month. How much? Okay. I'm just, you know, trying to accomplish a lot of things before 50. What are you doing? Uh, well, I, I'm wondering. I got those shoes on. I'm jealous. <laughs> and you out here with no shoes on? This is warm weather to me. I know. It's hot out here to you, right? Do a little pop. Ooh. Ooh, it's so cringy. Because <laughs> she ate her ass up. She sat there and took it. <laughs> she said, she I'm just your book, um, um, 
that's what it looked like is coming out. She said, no, that that's not coming out anytime soon. My other book, such and such, is coming out in November. And then my <laughs> other book, Black Unicorn, will be coming out soon as well. Um, what are you doing? Mm. She's like, this I'm trying to do what I can. That was a, that was a Mortal Kombat fatality, bro. She, I'm it was crazy. Jesus it Christ. was crazy. She was ready. She was ready. I, I just didn't... She but how you come up? How you come up with a co well costume change? I, uh, wow! She said, "How was it?" He walked right into that, change? and she said, "Costume, baby, this is, this is." And she said, "This is my, this is what I look like." And then she say, "Little costume change." I, did I hear little in no, the beginning? A costume okay. change. I think I'm, say, a I'm, I'm trying to make it worse. <laughs> no, you can be mad now, but I, I love her. This ET um reporter, I've seen her for years. Yeah. She's been here. She's yeah. one of the originals. Uh, I don't think she meant, and I'm going to, that's my, um, that's me, li literally my disclaimer. I don't think she meant anything harmful by it, but we have to understand some of these things are built inside of people mm. who are not black. And when they speak to black people that they know have come from hard places or the person have talked about their hard places they come in from, it's been years. Tiffany Haddish is now an established, not only comedian, but an actor. Okay. She is an author. She has so many different titles about herself. And I've seen, this is the Oscars we're talking about. People change all the time to go into um, after parties. And it's like, mm -hmm. this is the thing. Or they change because, you know, this was their morning um, red carpet look. Now when they're going to go sit, as a woman of luxury, you have that option. You can do whatever the hell you want. So when you speak to me, you ask me what I'm wearing. She said costume. She said, no, this is a gown. Baby. Baby. So many other words she could have used. Wardrobe. I bet outfit, she'll find the words now. Dress. No, she said she, costume. She, said she, ain't ever for me. she knew she tried it because I mean, I want <laughs> them to be afraid. I want um, these reporters As a report, to be afraid. Wait, that's the first time we saw Will Smith smack somebody was a reporter on the red carpet, actually. Now that you talk but, about but it. The reporter tried to um, allegedly um, tried to kiss him. And the mm -hmm. reporter um, is French. So when you, I mean, I'm Haitian. We have different, same customs when it comes to that. When you mm. greet somebody, you kiss them. And so that's what allegedly happened, that he was trying to kiss him. And Will Smith gave him a nice love tap. <laughs> like a nice love tap. And um, yeah, he had but, a little more yeah. force behind this one. He had a little golf swing behind the Chris. Did, and did y'all see what? Yeah, rotation in the hip. <laughs> what uh, she said? About the oh slap. yeah, I saw. She said she would um have had um she would uh, have had a conversation with Jada, her her her, her um husband, and so she she told us you need to go. Who said that, that now? Wait, who back. said that? <laughs> oh who oh yeah, that? she told she told said she had a conversation with Jada. Said, girl, you better suck his D from the back. <laughs> Wait, who, who said this though? Tiffany Haddish the joke. Oh, <laughs> Tiffany don't play. <laughs> Tiffany ain't playing. <laughs> so, you know, Tiffany, you know when Tiffany got a drink in her too, she ain't no joke. But anyway, yeah. don't play. Don't play. <laughs> I, I love that moment for um Tiffany Haddish. I am going to replay that. I'm going to become that. I'm going to live that. I'm going to post that in my in my stories maybe once a month so that I can remember who I am when these people are speaking to me in any other avenues that I'm working in while I'm working in those avenues and they just have some way of speaking to people with melanin um you're gonna address my softness you're gonna address my luxury like you address everybody else's that comes in this environment all right so we're at the end of the show you guys i do have to go i'm going to the dentist to go get these teeth <laughs> <We're Yeah. finished. laughs> <Teeth So>. <laughs> <laughs> i love you guys so much and hey, um, goodness. it was good being with y'all like all morning like we right. were here from like eight to morning. ten we were hey. that was all right that was we cool were. I like really that. Right. It, that. It was cool. Glad <laughs> you came. Oh, I thought she Glad froze. to have you. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were saying come again at 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. I was like... All right, Rebecca. <laughs> hey, what's that? What's that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> anyway, play some closing music. Get out of here, man. I love, love y'all. It's been a great morning. morning. Y'all mean it. Appreciate y'all. Hey, Give me... Run me my... Run me my taco, money. Thank you, Lakeith. <laughs> and she called him out by the way. See y'all next time. Bye, Take guys. Take care, everybody. <laughs> All right, y'all. We are out of here. But of course, I can't go anywhere without giving you your affirmation for the day and also making sure that you join patreon.com slash like or not or patreon.com slash the DPD show and also go to act.tv slash join and not only follow but act 
Did I say it right, David? I probably messed it up. But anywho, your affirmation for the day is, I am confident that my difficult days will end and I will find joy again. I am confident that my difficult days will end and I will find joy again. Y'all go be great, man. Bubba's Mixtape Volume 1 is coming soon. It has officially been announced today. So make sure that y'all join so y'all get access to it. Love y'all mean it. We will see y'all tomorrow, Wednesday. Y'all gonna be great. Deuces. Unlocking all the memories of my new home. Ventilated echoes playing to and fro. To and fro. Back and forth.